Medicine's optimization in my organization is about looking at all the different aspects of care we can provide to the patient, focused on the patient around medicines. And that's aspects of safety, it's aspects of clinical effectiveness, and it's actually aspects of embedding medicines related care in every part of our practice. And it's looking at all the different ways that we can all contribute to provide that care for our patients. I think medicines optimization has grown in the last two years because we are more focused on looking across interfaces and across boundaries than we were. So now it isn't a question of when might I contact somebody in primary care if I'm in secondary care, it's I will be doing that because actually I'm not providing care if I don't do that. I think the demand and resource issues around medicines optimization are a real challenge and in our organisation what we are trying to do is we're trying to look at prioritising patients for the care that they need. So whereby, for example, in a hospital organisation, one might have provided the same level of pharmaceutical care, if I can use an old term, um, to all patients, what we're now looking is perhaps targeting, stratifying patients. So, for example, my area of specialty, which is care of older people, we have a medicine support service where we identify patients who are at risk of preventable medicines related admissions and actually we provide them with a higher level of support because we know that they are vulnerable to medicines related problems. We look after them in hospital, we have consultations with them in hospital but most importantly we follow them across the interface back to their next sector of care whether that's home or intermediate care and we liaise with social services, with their primary health care professionals to ensure that we can optimise medicines for them in the best way we can in a continuing journey. And that of course includes handing over care to our community pharmacy colleagues or our GP practice based pharmacist colleagues. So if I think about the kind of patients that we look after on a daily basis Many of these patients will have multimorbidity, so they'll have a number of clinical conditions. They'll probably be on multiple medicines, more than five medicines are very common. The average number of medicines for older people is between seven and eight, but some, as you know, will be many more than that. And of course, they might be taking 12, 15, or even 30 doses of medicines or tablets a day. So there's an enormous medicines-related burden for these patients. Some of them will be on high-risk medicines, ones we know that cause hospital admissions. Some of them will be in social situations where um, their care is vulnerable. So, for example, you might have a patient in hospital who has, for example, broken a hip, but actually is the main carer for their spouse who's suffering for dementia. So, actually, there you have not one vulnerable patient, but you have two. I think the barriers to medicines optimization are often in our heads before they're in our hands. Now I'm not suggesting there are no barriers <laughs> that are in our hands, but I think with change, change often has to start with change in thought, and change in thought then allows change in action. So if I can be so bold as to say, I think it's a change in culture that needs to precede the change in actions. I'm reflecting on how we'll know when we've got medicines optimization right. And actually, the answer to that question is when we have patients who say, I'm getting the best from my medicines and I'm supported in that by all the health and social care professionals who provide care for me. Now, that might sound like a, a soundbite or something bold to say, but actually, I think in terms of a global method of measuring it, the only way we can tell we're doing it right is to ask the people whom we are serving, whom we as NHS professionals have a duty of care to. So I think the answer to the question of when will we know we've got it right is we will ask our patients and they will tell us. For me, the main change we need to make in order to embed medicines optimization in our practice is we have to really push forward with integrating our care. And that is, for example, if you're talking about pharmacists integrating their care, that's getting rid of all those cultural barriers to do with community pharmacists and hospital pharmacists and actually start thinking as, of ourselves as people who serve patients who have pharmacy qualifications. Um, 
And that will mean that hospital pharmacists can refer directly to community pharmacists and community pharmacists can refer to hospital pharmacists and GP practice based pharmacists also can have those formal referrals. And then looking more widely, we're looking at all other health and social care professionals having a formal system for patients to get help with their medicines. And finally, and probably most importantly, our patients need to know they can come to us directly wherever we are. They can know what we have to offer them and they can take advantage of the services that I know we can provide. Patient-centric, to me, means a time when a pharmacist thinks about the patient before they think about the prescription. And when the pharmacist is actually focused on what outcomes there are going to be from those medicines, from the perspective of the patient, we'll know we've got to patient-centred care. In order to deliver the change we need for medicines optimisation, for me the number one priority is strong leadership. And by that I don't just mean strong leadership from the top of the NHS, I mean strong leadership from every single profession that is involved in medicines related care. So we will need that from our pharmacy leads in hospital, we will need it from our community pharmacy leads, we will need it from our CCG pharmacy leads. And we will need them to be working not only together with each other, but they will need to be leaders working with other leaders from other professions, particularly, I think, social services, district nursing, some of the primary care services that we traditionally haven't engaged with in order to optimise medicines. And once we see all those leaders work together with one focus, owning medicines-related care, we'll be on a good track. In order to get medicines optimisation off the ground, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to be educated about what each other do. So we have to start learning from each other in a positive way. How many hospital pharmacists really understand how it works in a community pharmacy? How many GP practice-based pharmacists have had the opportunity to sit with their colleagues in community and in hospital around a table to understand the patient journey? Most importantly, how many of any of us have sat with patients and asked them what they think of their medicines related journey? Once we improve our education around all of those things, we'll have the tools we need to make that journey happen. If I had the opportunity to speak to a big group of pharmacists and ask them to make one change to support medicines optimization, what I would say to them is to think about one or two patients where you think they are vulnerable to medicines related problems and take some time to talk to those patients and understand where those patients are coming from and what they need from medicines. Just have one conversation that starts with what do you think your medicines can do for you? How can I support you to get the best outcomes from your medicines? And see how that makes you feel as a practitioner. My guess is that every single one of you is going to come away thinking, that's the reason I went into pharmacy as a profession, and you will do medicines optimization because this will tell you how to do it.